Let's call the Finance Committee meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. I will call the Select Board meeting to gather up to order at 5.03 as well. All right. So starting with the agenda, we have a lot on the agenda, and there's some stuff we're not going to do tonight because um, there's just too much. So um, we were going to do a budget overview. I'm going to give a three second my version of the budget overview um, because the school meetings are this week. And once we have the school prices, we'll have a much more accurate. So we'll give a thorough discussion of it next time we meet, which is two weeks from tonight. Um, but right now, when I take everything we have so far in hand and then Margaret suggested this, increase the ones we don't have by two and a half percent and plug those in, we are $300,000 in the hole with no capital. And that means we're spending essentially a million dollars of free cash on operating expenses, which is pretty much verboten. Um, so we're, we're in a world of hurt this year. Um, we will, what we've done in the past is go through all of the budgets with the understanding that it's a first pass, we want to understand everything that's in it, but we will almost definitely be coming back to everybody on the budget and saying, what can we do to close this gap? Um, so with that cheery note, the other things that we are not doing this evening, um, we were last, we talked the debt schedule last week. Brenda has updated it. She wants to run it by Dave Prickett um, to look at the financing for the wastewater treatment plant loan. Um, so we're gonna do that, and so we'll talk about that next time we meet. And then I had town accountant budgets on here, but I wasn't following the directions. They're not until March, so we're pushing that off until March. Um, then quickly looking at upcoming meetings. Tomorrow night is Frontier School Committee. Wednesday night is Franklin Tech School Committee. It's at 7 p.m. It is um, remote. We have, oh, I should forward. I got this morning um, a copy of the Franklin Tech budget. Um, our, we went from 25 kids to 35 kids at Franklin Tech, which is great from the perspective of these are kids going out and getting good functional skills. It's really hard on our budget. So, um, so that's there. They can come, they offer to come to one of our meetings and present their budget. Um, do we want them to do that? And have a discussion with the Franklin Tech folks themselves, or do we want to just look at their handout and see what the damage is. It's a pretty, I mean, it's, it's, it's a 3% it's on the, increase. It's on the budget summaries I had. In their out. budget um, for, for the overall school, but since our kids went up so much, it's like a 40% increase or something for us, it's huge. Um, so. I'd be happy, I'd be happy meeting with them if, if time allows. Um, I'm sure their explanation will be pretty straightforward, but maybe later in the process when we have a better understanding of what these other budgets will bring. Um, it's pretty formulaic, right? It's, they have 13 or 14 towns or something and they have no, a formula. No, they have the whole county. Huh? I, think they have, I think they have all 26 towns. Okay. I mean, it's, it's in. There's quite a few. Yeah. There's quite a few. Yeah. There's not. It's not four. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Do you have a like last year? It was two hundred fifty thousand. This year it's four hundred thousand. I mean, um, so well, actually, last year, yeah. it was, last year it was four hundred and seventy-one thousand. This year it's six hundred and sixty thousand. So like, so, so it's about two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand increase. Yeah, that's just our assessment, right? Is it in the book? Yep. Uh, no. No. <clears throat> no. Just on your summary. Did, did they have any capital in that yet? Because I know they're looking at building a new school and they were looking at spending about a million bucks to kind of finalize some plans, but I don't know if that's in the budget or that's just in their reserve or whatever. The only capital that we're paying for is the capital that we voted in 2015 or whatever it is. So it's like $18,000, it's not much. Yeah. And it would be interesting to hear what's on their radar as well. You know, for, for future. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll accept their offer to come and right. we'll pick a date that they can wow. come and talk to us. All right. Um, so back to the schedule. Tomorrow's Frontier, Wednesday's Franklin Tech, 
Um, Thursday is Deerfield Elementary School Committee meeting. Next Monday is President's Day, so we're not going to be next Monday. Um, February 21st, I have town warrant meeting warrant closes. Is that still the plan? Yes. That's still the plan. Okay. Um, okay. And then the 26th, we'll be back to our regular meetings, and we have the schedule for that. So any questions on that? The Franklin Tech meeting is remote. You have to email to get the login. Um, I will forward the directions about how to do that in case you're interested. <clears throat> meeting and budget. If we're going to get the Franklin Tech person to come, could we maybe just prep them by asking for like a three minute primer on how they're funded? I mean, how, how the whole formula thing works. And I mean, assuming we don't have a lot of discretion with that, but so it'd be just nice to hear from them what the, how the funding works countywide, what the formula okay. generally means. And, yeah. just, just a reminder to yeah. speak into the microphone Sorry. so that people can hear you out. Yeah. Okay. And one other, just okay. quick question was who is the, the name Dave Perk or Perk? Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Okay. They, they um, prepare the analysis for the select board every fall to determine what the sewer rates are going to be. Okay. So I've given them all of the budget information to see if they agree that uh, what I'm projecting is doable okay. and, and within reason. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure you don't want to have a huge increase this year, so. Right. Julia, 10 students, 10 more students from Deerfield or mm -hmm. from Deerfield? Only. Deerfield. Yep. Deerfield it's, residents only. Yeah, it's a per town charge. Yep. I don't think that trend's going to stop. <clears throat> no, at, least, <clears throat> at least not in the foreseeable future. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. think so. So I'm kind of, it, it, yeah. I think it's good for the kids I, I think it's great to get those skills but but anyways um, I think we're ready for minutes yes. I think so. yeah <laughs> um, Joe, before you start mm -hmm. there's something in the remember the email I sent you about that one account just discussion in the minutes about that that I think are incorrect and I know you didn't want to talk about it tonight so we may be forced oh, no. to if, if there's something in the minutes you think needs correcting okay All that, right. that didn't doesn't portray what we talked about okay. right then we should fix it now the I make a motion do we supposed to make a motion to review yes, the minutes or do we just start uh, okay the bottom of page one it talks about account 145 54 10 the budget sheet shows for 2024 31,540 mm, but the financial statement is 41,540 um, the $10,000 difference I guess that happens every year Brenda every but year that uh, I as I said at the meeting last week every year the treasurer has the opportunity to file um, an additional expenditure amount with the tax recap for tax title collections or tax title legal work. And every year since at least seven, eight, nine years ago, we've been doing that. Um, Sarah, as we talked about last week also, Sarah had asked for 10,000 extra for this fiscal year because of the uh, land to low values that that she wanted to keep moving and get sold um, but she has decided since then that it's best to wait until the beginning of the next fiscal year so that'll just go back into free cash yeah. I, what, I, what just, I just I just think the budget sheet should reflect the fact that there's been ten thousand dollars more every year that we so budgeted for ten thousand we more. budgeted ten thousand more which in which case the minutes are incorrect because it will be a decrease Well, you don't know that because she'll add something next year for tax title. So it probably won't be a decrease. Yeah, but that's what we're voting, though. <laughs> this is, just to clarify, this is Treasurer Collection. 145-54-10. Correct. 
Correct. Yeah, the treasurer collector expense, right? Thirty-nine thousand seven seven five in my sheet. So, doesn't John? sound accurate. No, the thirty-nine thousand seven seventy-five is accurate until next fall the when the statement. tax recap right. is completed, and she has an opportunity to add what, yeah, uh, well, monies what, for what tax you put title in collection. As the appropriation. Okay. So the financial statement has it. Has more. Okay. Yeah, the financial <coughs> statement has the appropriation is forty-one thousand five forty, and I just think the budget sheet should reflect that. And I can change that. I could definitely change that. There's a note on there that there are additional tax title costs on the recap, but I can add them for the for the last years. In which case, the minutes say is that it would discuss an increase, but actually it'll be a decrease. As of what we know now. Yeah. So, so it looks the same as yours. I guess it does. Yep. Yeah. But that's my feeling. I mean, maybe the committee wants to say to heck with it and Leave yeah, it's, it's not exactly a budgeted item. It's an item that the treasurer is able to add to when we do the tax recap. But I can I can add it to the budget sheet so that it shows what what has actually been appropriated. Or it could be a so, note in the explanation that la like the, this is what we budgeted, but but what was actually I don't know. Like yeah. You, yeah. It's just something in the in the line down there. This seems like you would have to add it to revenues also. Nope. Right. No, nope. it doesn't get added to revenues. It, 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 it uh -huh. uh, revenues are adjusted for it, but that's a common practice. Like I said, the treasurer is the only one that has that opportunity to add something on the tax recap. Barb discovered it and said. I'm doing it, and we've done it ever since. Yeah. And that's money that's spent in order to collect taxes that we're having trouble collecting. Is that true? Yes, or? it's just for tax title um, expenses. And that comes from direct from revenues, but nope, doesn't come from revenues. I see. It, uh, revenues are adjusted revenues, okay. or. You know, it's just, it, there's, there's a lot of moving parts when you get to the tax recap, so it could be in the overlay number, it could be in the revenue number, but overall, you know, to adjust for $10,000 is not a big thing. Most, in, in all of the years previous, it's been less than that. Anyway, that's, again, Finance Committee, that's just my thoughts that we should revise the sheet, so. Maybe I should make that a motion and then we can vote on it. So for the, <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud here. For the minutes, I think the minutes reflect what we actually talked about last week. True. Yeah. So I don't think we would change the minutes, but I think we could revisit that line item if we wanted to. Okay, in which case you wanted to wait to yeah. some other night, right? <laughs> right, because okay. we got a lot going on tonight. All right. but, okay. Any other discussion of the minutes? We haven't. We don't have a motion yet. A motion. Uh, a motion to approve the minutes um, as presented for February fifth, twenty twenty-four. Okay. Second. Yes. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. No, it's not. Um, against abstentions. Six zero one. That passed. I was not here. I yeah. don't disagree with you. <laughs> what am I going um, to spend this year? <coughs> What's that? Okay. So what am I going to to spend this year? Budget line item review. We're good. ready for I the I did adjust your numbers budgets. for the tax force money. So, yep. So it looks pretty good. All right. We're ready for police budgets. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> police budgets start with 210-5110 for payroll. Um, so maybe we can go ahead and have a motion for that, and then John can talk about all of his numbers. All right. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve police payroll count two ten five one one zero for one million one hundred twenty seven thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars. We have a second. Second. All right. We're ready for you. 
Hi, good evening, everybody. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, what I gave you in your packet tonight, for those that can't see at home or could be watching this at a later date, is the past calls for service number in 2023, 2022, 21, and 20. You'll see in 2023 by the sheet in front of you that we did 12,269 calls for service, which is about 33.6 calls on an average day. There's 132 arrests, 234 active investigations, 108 motor vehicle crashes that required a report, meaning there was personal injury or the damage was over $1,000. 1,125 motor vehicle stops, 494 medical emergencies. And you can kind of peek down through uh, the past years, and they vary a little bit, but we're on track for, for previous years. Uh, we don't usually see any massive trends, but that's always, uh, I don't want to knock on wood at the same time. So if you flip over to the next page, one of the common questions that we have from the Finance Committee over the past, <coughs> my 12 years as chief, is when you see cruisers on details, the fees that we collect. So the administrative fees and the cruiser fees to the town, this is uh, the collections over the years. You'll see in 23, we collected $30,275. Mass Highway charged their reimbursement rate for cruisers on details on an hourly basis from $10 to $15 January 1st. So I, in fact, increased our policy from $10 to $15 an hour for those cruisers effective January 1st as well to make sure that we don't leave any lost revenue on the table for those cars out there. So over the nine years, $178,000 have floated in from details to the town, which just slightly offsets the, um, the administrative fees side of things, the oil changes, the gas, the uh, cruiser maintenance, et cetera. Currently, we, uh, we have six marked cars, and you'll see they're all detailed out here for you. The oldest is uh, a 2015 Ford Utility. It is not a hybrid. It's the only one that's not a hybrid. You see that it's got about 121,000 miles on it. The reason that car is so old when you look in comparison to the other cars in the fleet is that was my old supervisor's car. So the two sergeants drove it, and they never beat on it. So that car lasted forever and ever and ever. It went in such in good shape that we actually cycled it back as a detail cruiser when it was on the backside. For primary patrol fleet, the, uh, the car that's due up for a replacement uh, in the next nine to 12 months is the car two, it's a 2020. It's got 94,771 miles. And I know I cover this every year with the finance committee, but I do have to say it. Um, because you know you guys go through so much data the first year two three years these cars are very low mileage they're assigned to one or two police officers they break them in they're treated very well they're by senior full-time folks so for the first year or two you're going to see that they put on eight to twenty thousand miles and those mileage stay low by the time you hit year three or four they're cycling down to the part-time folks they're running 24 hours a day and they're putting 30 to forty thousand miles in those cars a year so that bottom car in the last year or two will jump 30 to 40,000 a year. So let's say car two here, you look at 94,000 miles. By the time we get a cruiser to replace that this fall, that will be upwards of 120 to 130,000 miles, which doesn't include obviously any of the side time on it, whether it's batteries or idle time or anything else, that's merely mileage. So that's the primary patrol fleet. Flipping over to the next page, one of the questions that we ran into last year with the police reform is we no longer can really hire part-time police officers. We know Massachusetts eliminated the part-time police academy, so we had to go to full-time recruits only. We are still filling shifts with part-time folks. They're 55, they're 57, one of them 72, and we're still filling them. I didn't run the part-time shifts this year, but what I did do is provide the one that I gave you last year from 2018 to 2022. And you see that on average, we're running 60, 66, 68 part-time shifts a month uh, with the total hours. And the FTE stands for full-time equivalency. <laughs> so basically, if you're running 68 shifts a month, that is in 2022, the equivalent of 3.62 bodies, but you're not paying the retirement on them. You're not paying the medical insurance or anything like that. So where does that play into the scheduling? We know that Deerfield Police Department staffs two police officers 24 hours a day. We know that one is dedicated to South Deerfield, the other is dedicated to Old Deerfield, East Deerfield, and West Deerfield. So there's two people on 24 seven. That does not vary from Christmas to New Year's to July 4th to March 21st. It's all the same. 
So you see up top that 365 days a year, 48 hours is 1,705 or 17,520 hours that we need to staff in general. Routine workers work about 20, 80 hours a year. The police officers by schedule work a four and two. So they get a few additional days off a year. I think if you count it out, it's about 16 additional days off a year with rotating weekends. Vacation, personal time, training, et cetera. They're working on average of about 16 to 1700 hours a year. When you divide that down through, you'll see the full-time equivalencies of backfilling between the school resource officer, the chief, and then we have a guy that's dedicated to the regional anti-crime task force that we get reimbursement money from. So our true full-time equivalency that we're running on behalf of Deerfield PD is about 13.78, even though we have 10 full-time police officers. And that 3.78 is made up still between part-time staffing and an overtime shift here or there. Unfortunately, over the years, we are losing part-time people. It's requiring us to rely more and more on overtime, which to me has always been a forbidden um, word. I've just, I've never liked to use overtime because I think it's very cost ineffective over long term. But unfortunately, that's the new world we're living in when they eliminated part-time officers. When they eliminate part-time police, it's the equivalent of looking at the elementary school and saying, by the way, you're no longer allowed to use instructional assistance. Everybody's got to be a certified teacher. Licensed practitioner nurses, by the way, you're gone. It can only be registered nurses. And it's placed us in an extremely awkward position everywhere in Massachusetts, not just Western Mass. So in order to hire a new candidate now, I gave you a police officer vacancy <coughs> timeline. I know I covered this last year as well, so forgive me for those members that have been around for, for one, two, or 10 or 20 years with me. Uh, one to four weeks if we advertise for position and then we start interviews a week five or six. Week seven to 10 is a conditional offer of appoint appointment. With police work, you have to do a physical ability test called a PAT. Cooper standards applies to a fitness exam to get into the police academy, a medical exam, an extensive background, and a psychological exam. Week 11 to 35, it depends on when they're next scheduling an academy. And the academy is 20 weeks long. So this is a huge variable between when we actually can hire somebody, get them in a police academy, get them out, and then once they graduate, start the field training officer program, which is anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. It basically takes us from 12 to 18 months to hire a new full-time police officer now that's not trained. It has placed us in an extreme bind, and like I said, overtime's going up, and quite frankly, I'm not okay with it. For those that don't know, I've spoken on behalf of MIA conferences, the Maya conferences. Um, I've spoken all over about this, and I've even looked at our own legislative delegation and said if you had a vacancy in your office, and I looked at you and told you you couldn't replace that person for 18 months, would it hinder you? But unfortunately, what's done is done, and there's no appetite to change it. So with that said, we had to adjust the budget up in the last two years. There was a, there was a jump in it. This year it is at 4%. Um, my pay came up. There's cost of living adjustments and contractual adjustments for other folks. And I don't know what else we increased this, Brenda. I don't think anything. I, don't think anything. I think it's pretty much all contractual between myself and the police officers. And I'm happy to entertain any questions. What you, what, are we going through the chair or should we just start speaking? Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm just wondering, curious, what you attribute. You have over 10% drop in assigned calls from 22 to 23, which seems pretty significant. Yeah, it's, it's hit or miss to you and I. That seems like a lot, but when we break it down to three calls a day, it's really just hit or miss. I think on the backside of COVID, we were erupting. So I think we actually saw a lull, a little bit of a, a lull um, at one point for a few months, and then it spiked ungodly. What we've seen in police work today is mental health calls are through the roof mm -hmm. in our assist society. Uh, our dementia, our Alzheimer calls are way up and the services out there are just not there. Like society erupted three years ago and said police should not be doing this, 
and yet we still don't have the services for it. And mental health issues are only climbing daily. So there was a joint thing where you had a mental health person we do, and coming with you. Is that still going? They're amazing. So they respond out and they try and get them assistance, but there's no more beds created for these folks mm -hmm. to get into. There's no more facilities for them to be uh, placed in. And then we have folks that are so bad that facilities won't even take them and they're trespassed from emergency rooms. And the police are still dealing with them. It's unbelievable. If society ever really realized some of these folks out there, number one, they'd be heartbroken, but they'd be beyond, be beyond disgusted that the resources are not there. I think we've, yeah, I think uh, that has come to light. I, uh, society-wide, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough situation. Um, is there any breakdown on section calls that you receive? How many, how many of the assigned calls have related to having dissection. To like mental health? Yes. Yeah, I'm, we've seen a dramatic decrease okay. with CSO involved in our partnership with them. Okay. Okay. So they actually respond out and they'll actually set up a safety plan with the person. And what it does is it defers those costs from the emergency room and placement later on. It puts them in long-term care programs and they follow up with them. So there is success stories out there. The problem is, is mental health is just off the charts. Uh, you know, we as a society, between technology and social media, I don't have to tell every one of you, our brains were not made to process this stuff. We've evolved over 100,000 years. In, in five or 10 years, what we're asking the human brain to do is off the charts. Um, do you have anyone in the, kind of in the pipeline to, for a full-time person in this 52-week uh, time frame? We have a few candidates that are outstanding, but what we've also seen by this is the folks that are interested in criminal justice want no part of it anymore. There is a, a decrease in interest nationwide. There's vacancies everywhere, and police officers are becoming the hot commodity, and departments are paying off the charts. It's unbelievable. So what we tried to do three years ago with with everything that transpired in society, we tried to make policing a higher standard, uh, a greater burden with every single prospect, but it's actually like hitting the backlash point now where we're seeing less qualified candidates, less interest, people are drop rate, dropping their entry standards, and I'm not okay <coughs> with it. I, I won't drop my entry standards. I just, I'd rather let a position go vacant. And what happens to, um, I, I think we asked this every year, or you tell us, the <laughs> that you're replacing the 2020 hybrid, what will you do with that one? Ultimately, the last hybrid will be cycled into a detail cruiser. So hopefully, okay. because the last gas only car we have is still on details. Okay. So that will allow it to shut off for 10, 20 minutes, and then start back up for five minutes, charge those batteries up. That 2015 gas one will either be traded in or we'll get rid of it. It'll go out to auction. So what we usually do is, is the five years they're used as patrol cars, they cycle down, they cycle down, they cycle down. And then if it's decent enough, we hold it over as a detail car and we get that revenue on the side. Um, and yeah. Are your batteries holding up? So far, so good. Like, 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 I've heard departments have issues with them, but not many. Because it seems like the way you run a police cruiser would be hard on the battery because you're going to be running it down and charging it, it is. quite a bit. And yeah, no it is, and I'm shocked that they're holding up very well so far, but I don't like wanna, we've had problems with them um, electronically, but not with the batteries. That helps if they're hybrids, yeah, not, it, not EVs. Yeah, and you know, the, the gas, I, I've been able to keep the gas budget either down or the same over the years because those hybrids are, we're seeing like 22 miles to the gallon where the old gas cars were, eight to 10 between idling time and patrol time. They're just, they're terrible. Yeah. So I think the hybrids are definitely paying off. They're, the downside is they're six to $8,000 higher on the entry point. You can get a gas car for 35 or 36,000 where the hybrids are 45,000. So you're paying more up front. And originally the Green Energies grant was giving us $5,000 a year to get those cars. And I think since that stopped. Yeah, I, I just I just want to say I'm on the Maya 
um, advisory board, which is an insurance board. And most statistically, most police injuries are, you know, um, happen when they stop vehicles and they're, you know, talking to the people in the car or, or on details. And so, you know, we've in the past, rather than have John turn in the vehicles, um, we keep these vehicles until there really are beat, beat, no more vehicle left because it is really a safety issue to have the vehicle on the detail with our police officer. And, you know, aside from how awful it would be if they were injured, it, if you do look at the bottom line, John is already stressed out with um, trying to um, staff his position. So having someone injured and not being able to fill the, the um, you know, the, the de you know the, our regular work schedule plus the cost of insurance and the cost of medical is, is really huge. So it really is cost effective to keep those detail cars going, you know, even if they can't do anything but just sit on the side of the road. It really is a safety issue, I think. I've got, I've got a, a couple Go of ahead, questions. Um, I, I, I apologize. I wasn't aware that you're, lo you're, you're looking for another full-time officer. I couldn't tell from the budget sheet. I, because there are names attached to all, all the, the lines. Um, I, had asked for, um, I had asked for the FinCon to receive copies of all the, the contracts, just because they're oh, mentioned I at every single meeting, yet. and it would just yeah. be good to have that. Yeah, you're right. Um, my question, though, uh, regarding the contracts is, um, are outside details part of the contract, or is it just a departmental policy? Departmental policy. Okay, so, yep. de so details are not covered at all in the contract. It basically, it references details that I have to review and, and update the policy on an annual basis is what it says. Okay. Yeah. So what percent is the admin fee currently? 10. It's 10%? Yep. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have another couple of questions here. Okay, can you please, I, I, I don't know if, if um, everyone else here would benefit from a, just a very brief discussion about Post and Bridge Academy. Um, my understanding was that you could employ part-time officers mm -hmm. as long as they pass the, the Bridge Academy. Yes. Um, so it's not that part-time officers are, are, are gone by mm -hmm. the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to get them, mm -hmm. I, I get it. But could you just give everybody a little briefing on Post and the Bridge Academy <clears throat> training? Sure. So I'm not sure how beneficial it is because what you're referencing really doesn't apply to us. Our 10 part-time police officers are, nine are out of 10 are retired. They're 57 to 72. So they were full-time police officers. Okay. So there are very- Bridge Academy trained part-time huh? officers. You're not using Bridge I have one. Oh, you have one? I have one left. My last three are all state police troopers now. Okay. In the last 11 years, I have lost over 13 people to Mass State Police, four to federal agencies. <clears throat> That's the downside of being a good police department. When the Secret Service comes in Deerfield PD, I throw them out. Yeah, Deer Deerfield mints a lot of people who uh, you know come in and then uh, leave right after to you know, bigger agencies, so. This is, a, that's yeah. an interesting, that's an interesting point when it comes to academy training. Uh, does the town, um, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to phrase this, but uh, when a new recruit comes on mm -hmm. and hasn't been academy trained, mm -hmm. does the town require a time commitment to serve the town? Or if they don't meet that time requirement, um, they would be required to pay back um, an apportioned amount of the academy training cost to the town. Yeah, there's a standardized form for that. Okay. The, the academy cost is $3,200, which you can ask them for back for up to 36 months. Okay. The problem is, is I have that standardized form for Mass Chiefs. We've also been told by general counsel it's unenforceable. You cannot require an employee to pay back to train them. So they absolutely will sign it the yes. day they go to the academy, and then the day they leave, you're kind of holding your hands up. The good part is we've always got two to four or five years out of people, mm -hmm. but they've gone for bachelor's degrees, they've gone for master's degrees, and then all these federal agencies and the state police look and go, Deerfield PD, yeah. 
we're grabbing them. My thought, it, and we, we used this method too, mm -hmm. where I where I've been in the past, and uh, my thought has always been that an executed contract is better than having nothing. Absolutely. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do have them sign it. Yeah. But you and I know it. It does not mean much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a couple questions. Absolutely. Too. Of um, course. So the detail funding, sure, the thirty thousand dollars that you get, yep. So does that goes into the does general that show fund? Show up in revenues, or does it just? It does show up in revenues. It goes so into you free cash. That, yep. You estimate that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It does. Not a penny comes back to it's, us. It's part of our local receipts, <laughs> so not necessarily goes into free cash. Just what's over and okay. above what we've. It's already in the revenues. All right. I'm glad you answered it. <laughs> <laughs> I just know it doesn't come to me. <laughs> it goes to the general fund. And then um, for the vehicles, sure. if you extend it out to like a 14-month replacement instead of a 12-month, mm -hmm. would that what would that do to you? I don't know. I'd have to study it over long term to see. One of the problems, so in my 12 years, it's been very um, difficult to predict anything. We went from a Ford Crown Victoria costing us, when I started as a police officer, $12,000 up to a Ford Crown Victoria costing $29,000 to these all new all wheel drive cruisers that we all rolled our eyes at and said those things are gonna be dead roadside in six months to them lasting pretty decent. And now all of a sudden about five years ago we introduced the hybrid series. So everything's so like fluid that I never have a right answer for you. Um, I, I don't, without doing like a long term look or study, I don't even know what to say. Are you still having trouble getting them? So we always have trouble. For a couple years there, yeah, they they are, went, you'd order it and it'd be. They produced 24s for three months and they gave us six months in advance notice of that. So um, we actually have to order a 25 now and they're telling us six to 12 months just to get it in. And that's not to build it, that's just to get it on the lot. Okay. How long has Can the I? cruiser been on the general fund operating budget? I think it should be capital. Honestly. Well, I was just wondering <laughs> if it should at least be a standalone item, a standalone warrant article. I just don't know how long it's been in, in it's the been quite a, well, budget. since I've been doing it. I, when did it well, go? We transferred it from capital into a, a general appropriation in the budget about nine years ago. So when I researched back, we've been getting one cruiser annually since 1991. Every single year we've got a car. So we met with capital a few years in a row and capital's like, if you're literally ordering a car every single year and you've proved to us that this has been 20 years past, this, this was 15 to 16 years of the previous chief and then myself for, for four years, yet this doesn't need to come in front of capital every single year. So they, they said, no, that's like, just list that in your budget. It's, the issue though is that it's become a very high cost item in the budget right. we're already spending free cash to fund the operating budget and with a very large increase it's uh, I, I think it's just becoming burdensome inside but the operating budget for, uh, we don't a standalone warrant article paid from free cash or paid from capital stabilization or paid from stabilization or so you uh, you said you actually mentioned in your um, your roads uh, recap that you plan to have a little over seventy thousand dollars left from your HVAC project, so you know turned back funds from projects which I would never advocate for spending any money for a project that's not completed. I mean, but you're basically saying spend paper that is free cash, but you as don't a, want to use free cash. To, you know, it, it, we're ultimately spending the same money. I think it, yeah, it's tr it's true, but I think it would help mitigate mitigate the use of free cash in operating budgets, and I do think that makes I, I do think that that makes a difference as far as um, you know the town's credit rating um, uh, mm -hmm. solvency and things like that like Julie said we are we are entering a pretty dire fiscal situation and I think to free up anything from the operating budget to mitigate the use of free cash should at least be considered I we, we already okay. use free cash um, for paying for the skims and oh, a lot. Yes. A lot. Yeah. And that's operating and, and, as well. And the reason we have usually so much free cash is because we've been so conservative oh, with yeah. the, um, our formulas, um, you know, how we, how we generate revenue. And um, I've been on the capital committee since um, it started. And um, 
you know, it just it, having the capital discuss whether we get a cruiser every year just doesn't seem when it's part of John's operation. We don't want our police officers to be sitting in their, you know, station. They are out every day. Oh, I, I completely understand so that. I'm really talking like, mechanism, you know, funding mechanism, where to right. put, where to put well, it. Well, I mean, so I feel it could like be it's a standalone item without going to the capital committee. Right. Um, yeah. And it would, I mean, if, if we're, we're not supposed to spend, free cash is supposed to be for one-time things, and this is. Right, and that's why I don't so. agree with the free cash, M Margaret, because it is not a, I mean, we already pay for skims out of that, which is a regular thing. And our free cash shouldn't be <clears throat> for something that is so regular like the cruiser. Okay. Well, there are other things that are regular as well. I mean, we're using free cash to fund the reserve fund, which is, you yeah. know, in, in turn, um, is supplementing the operating budget. We're using mm -hmm. free cash for scams. We're using free cash, um, I can't remember what, there are separate warrant articles for various yeah. things. So, I mean, it's just, it's a point of discussion and. I'd like yeah, to not I, fix I, it tonight. Yeah. So we, we have we, a. We um, can't solve it. <laughs> we have a, we, we, we have a motion and a second on the police payroll. So let's concentrate on the police yeah. payroll itself. Not, nothing else police, just for a minute. Um, so any, yeah, any further done. questions on 210 -5110? I have a quick question. Yeah, that go it ahead. It came up something about that you are, John, looking for an additional person. That was last year. It's not in this year's budget. It's not. Okay. No. Because I didn't. No. See, that's what I was wondering. Yep. I didn't see it. Okay. No. Got it. So oh. there is. So there is no good look search right now. Okay. Thank yep. you for yep. clarifying yes. that. I yep. was confused. Yeah. Can you explain? I ask this every year, and I never remember. You're all right. Go ahead. The shift coverage line item. What is that? Uh, shift is that over time? It's, it's probably shift differential. You're looking at is it roughly twelve thousand dollars? Is uh, what you're looking at? Forty-two, forty-two five, shift coverage. Uh, forty-two five is the part-time backfill shifts. It's uh, okay. it's the generalized ba uh, part-time backfill shifts towards yeah. that three point six two number that we discussed. Top line. Yeah, because the differential is a different line, a couple lines down, which is the extra pay for. Oh, there's overtime pay down lower. Uh, no, it's uh, it's separate from overtime. Shift coverage was just picking up the um, when you take that four and two schedule with uh, with the ten full time people. It's just the hours picking up for that three point six two. So that three point six two comes out of anywhere from it could be training backfilling that week from the shift coverage to any of those other accounts that pick up for that. It's it's totally filling in a combination all over the place. Yeah, filling in when somebody. Uh, uh, full time is is on vacation or they're sick or you know that kind of thing. Any other question? Go ahead, Dave. Um, this may not be entirely focused just on police payroll, but I would just say the positive thing. You know, this budget has historically been a budget that has increased above average compared mm -hmm. with <laughs> town budgets. Mm -hmm. um, this year, it's back in sort of where probably people would expect it to be just in general. Um, but maybe this is a, a question for Brenda. There was a discussion, I think, last year about how, about what comes back from the police budget. It may not be specific to pay, payroll, but all of it combined, payroll and department expense. That well, there was, this was, a, this was a particular department that was very fiscally, conservatively, and soundly run. Well, that would be this department. Right. No, I understand that. My father that, but says the, I'm frugal, like him. I'm right. not cheap. So I, yes. well, well, I think but the debate was either, yes, we would give you kudos for all that, or why, why was the Finance Committee always giving you mm -hmm. 50000 extra? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, and I'm, so not really asking, I'm not really asking that debate right now, but I'm just curious, Brenda, for this last fiscal year that's coming to an end, what happened? So take a peek at those bottom numbers for me, yeah. and let's start back in 2019. All the way in the bottom of the page, you at 820,000, yeah, and I expended 720. So I gave the town back 30 thousand dollars that year. When we go into 2020, you'll see that I gave back roughly 23 thousand. In yeah. 21, I gave the town back uh, about 21 thousand. Yep. In 22, closer okay. to 60 thousand. Yep. In 23 anywhere about $31,000. So what happens is when you have a million dollar public <coughs> safety budget, one sexual assault investigation can cost you five to $12,000 between investigation and court prosecution time. I can't tell you right now that I have 
18 pending. Kids are sending naked pictures of themselves all over the place. My 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds think it is the norm. Those are not the sexual assaults. Those, believe it or not, are the child pornography disseminations that were like, this has to stop. So these investigations are now long term. They're taking longer and longer. I don't want to get off on a side tangent about that. My only point is with a public safety budget like the police department, you have to have wiggle room. You have to have spare capacity because it puts me in an awkward position and I don't sleep while grinding my teeth at night knowing I'm flirting with a half percent of my budget close. And, and you haven't had to, right? No. Because the town has looked after you. Yes, absolutely. So, so I'm just curious for this last year, where are we in that same 20 to 40 Thousand or? Right now, I'm hovering at 29,800 than positive. Okay. 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 Good. Well, and, and we do get some money towards the school resource officer. Yep. And we have a special revenue fund for mm -hmm. that that John does use for some of, the, some of that budget. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> so the follow on would be is this de <coughs> decrease here closing that gap, do we think, or is it decreased for other reasons as well? Uh, the last two years, I added uh, quite a bit on a side note because number one, the contractual increases. So what you saw was year one of a contract. You saw year two of a contract with the select board adjusted some pays up. And then what you also saw was um, the, the change in creation of post. So you see me jumping up the training lines down there. So I would like to see the budget back in check with, you know, 3% annually within a normal range of the two and a half plus uh, new growth in town. I want to see something that's sustainable. If we take what's been spent through January and assume it's going to be the same every month, you're about 40,000 ahead of the game. Okay. But 20. Oh. Hmm? Okay. Sorry. You'd, He's given us a number apparently. It's it you the the one oh three nine seventeen that was appropriated is ninety thousand a month, which comes to six hundred and thirty two thousand for seven months through January. Okay. But you've only spent five ninety two. Okay. So you're that far ahead of the game. If it continues equally. Yeah, well and it um, that reflects what we actually paid through January 31. Right. So it doesn't mean that we covered, so there's a lag time between. Sometime pay periods. Yeah, the pay mm -hmm. period and when we get paid. So that probably only went through January 20th or January 21st or whatever. So, so there is a little bit more in, there will be a little more in there than what you're thinking. Okay. Yeah. But it's good anyway. Yeah. The point is. Yeah, it's, it's all going, good. It's I, I try to be cost effective with everything we do. It's continuing yep. the past trend. Okay. Yeah. You're going to so, get some money back. When I get a budget sheet every month when Brenda sends it out at the end of the month, what I do is I go back to the last pay schedule involved and I add up the numbers throughout the year. And, and I don't know if Margaret did this as, as town administrator, but I would go through and say, okay, July was 31 days, this month, this month, this month. There's 182 days to December 31st. I would add in January. And if my last pay period in January was 22 days, I would go, okay, 22 plus 182 divided by 365 tells me that I'm 51.76% through the fiscal year. I take that 51.76 and I multiply it in to what I've paid out and what I have remaining. And I go, okay, what is my spare capacity? Because I don't sleep well at night if I don't have spare capacity in a public safety budget. If I start flirting close, if I'm upside down in the negatives, not good. No bueno. Any other? Yes. Second. Yeah, we need to keep moving. Oh, sorry. All right. Sorry. We have a motion to call the question. All those in favor of calling the question? That's unanimous. Okay. Um, all those in favor of police payroll at one million one hundred twenty-seven thousand eight hundred eight. 65. That's unanimous. Seven zero zero. I would make a motion that the select board approve um, one million one hundred twenty seven thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars um, as payroll for the police. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi aye. Trevor McDaniel aye. Carolyn Ness aye. Thank you. 
Okay, the next budget is 210-5400, which is the police department expense for 118,300. Do you have a motion? I move um, $118,300 in line item 210-5400 for FY25. Second. All right, uh, so the only thing I added in was I had this last year. I'm sure Julia will remember it. Um, most of the members were here last year with me as well. You remember I added the $3,200 to put one recruit through the academy a year. Uh, if we need to take that out, no matter what, and, and save the $3,200, I will still make expenses work. I will just little by little buy new equipment, um, and no matter what, I will make it work. So, But I did add the academy back in for one recruit a year. Last year, I removed it. Um, at the finance committee's request because we were flirting a little close as well. But everything else I kind of just left the same, status quo. So why hasn't gasoline gone down since we've had the hybrids? Um, the cost went up since we initially got them, but our use has gone down and I think this year we're actually seeing it. I wish I literally brought like a, a sheet in front of me because I think it is down. So. Okay. Yep, I'm wondering next year if we could start to adjust that. But over the years, we had one hybrid, then we got two, and then we got three. And in the last two years, we've got literally three of them because one was delayed by like 16 months, and four <clears throat> months later, we got the second car. Yeah. What are we trying to at? 46%. We're at 46% as of the mm -hmm. end of January. Right. So we should be closer to 60%. We're at 46%. Oh, so. de yes. Detail? Yeah. So gas, if you wanted, we could take a little bit off of, and we can try and make it work. I, I would expect that we will be coming back looking for money mm -hmm. um, at, at some point. Um, well, somebody's very good at it, and March is right in my office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any problem asking. <laughs> Partly demanding. <laughs> Everybody here knows I'm here to work with you any way I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I appreciate that you've come with only a $3,200, 2.78% uh, increase on your first pass. Mm -hmm. um, that, I, personally, <clears throat> that means a lot to me, knowing what, knowing what this town's going to be going through budget-wise this coming year. So thank you. Yeah. Great. Motion to Anybody approve? else have questions? Oh. Do we have a motion to approve? We have a motion. So. Yep. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Seven zero zero. Go ahead, Tim. Oh, you want to make the? I'll seven. make the. Seven I'll make the motion to approve one one hundred and eighteen thousand three hundred dollars for a police expense. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. <clears throat> Thank you. So if we're going to do the cruiser next, let's do, bless you, 65,000, not 70. Brenda and I already met about this. Yeah, yeah so that's 210-5800, which was the next one. 65. Yep, we're going to reduce that. I'd like to make a motion to uh, recommend 65,000 for uh, the police department cruiser account 210-5800. Did you say 55,000? 65. 65. Oh, you wish. 65. I wish. John, John, John has just said that he's- It's 70 on here. John, yeah, John has just said that he's asking for only 65. Oh, I'm sorry, I sorry. missed that. Sorry. I second. Did we get that? We needed a second. Okay. Thank you. I second. Any discussion? So you, can, I, can, I, can I give the background of why it's not capital? Because I was on the capital improvement committee at that time. The capital, the bylaws say uh, the capital improvement committee will look at all items over ten thousand dollars that have a five-year life and are not recurring. We concluded uh, was recurring. Oh, okay. And therefore, not capital. Thank you, John, so. for explaining that because um, that was why we voted it not as capital. Thank you. That was very clear. Yeah. 
Yeah, so most will remember last year by just quick discussion, uh, we were at 65,000. I reduced it to 55 because we were able to get our hands on one of the last 22s in the state before the bid jumped up a little bit. So we did drop that at last minute at the finance committee from 65 to 55 last year. So we took off the 10 grand last year. Um, this year, unfortunately, we had the order of 2025 and uh, the base price of those cars now on state bid, no matter if we go through state bid, the Greater Boston Police Council or the Plymouth County Commissioners are all about 45 dollars to $46,000. They're all within hundreds of dollars of each other, no matter which procurement contract we go through. Um, I, at Deerfield Police Department, am a member of all three, so not a big deal. It's whoever has the lowest cost is who I have municipal headquarters uh, right up on the slip when they do it for us. And then the other fifteen to $20,000 is always the equipment that goes into it. And the unfortunate part is nothing's made the same these days. Every three, five, seven years, they're changing these cars. So the cages and the consoles in them are not swappable like we did with the Crown Vicks. The Crown Vicks, we would swap through three generations. And unfortunately, with these cars, we, we can't the way we used to. In polite terms, it's ridiculous. So, um, I'm just curious, as someone with a 2013 Ford hybrid with about 175,000 miles, mm -hmm. the batteries have been pretty good, and following up on Julie's question, I was surprised, Julie, when you asked, why don't we, why can't we go from a 12 month to a 14 month? And I'm wondering if that question was related to sort of extended wear and tear, and if that's true, I'm wondering why we, given our budget situation, why we can't be a little more radical with that? And I guess, why do we get one every year? Mm -hmm. uh, and what about every other year? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just, I'm just curious about that. Like, I mean, sure. So these are, these are, I mean, apart from the 94, yep. right? And I heard what you said earlier that they're going to jump yep. you know, 30, 40, and whatnot. Um, but I'm just, yeah. So one and, of the. Sorry, and, and this is like a multi part question. And then, um, is this normal? In other words, um, you know, are, do, do towns our size, five, six cars marked, 10 to 15 police officers, are they, are, we, are they all getting cars every year? The vast majority of towns our size, yes. Yeah, the towns that are like 3,600, like the Northfields that have four full-time people, yeah. they skip a year and then they'll get three cars, but they maintain four cars total. Mm -hmm. Some of them have five cars. You, it's... Um, there's huge variables. It depends on how much commercial industry is there. Are they on major highways? Are they not? Are they just uh, farming um, residential communities? So it depends on the community themselves. But the vast majority our size, we are within industry standards of them, including staffing models, yes. So where one car comes a year is, I actually used to hand the finance committee and even capital when John was on it years ago. Um, Basically, when a police officer goes out eight hours a day, it's very easy to put 50 to 70 miles on a car just patrolling. So you've got two cars out, and when you average 140 miles a shift, and you start adding that up three shifts a day, and yeah, the part-time kids, when we had them years ago, would put a ton more miles on than the senior folks, but it all equaled out in the end game. We were putting on, on average, of 120 to 160,000 miles a year and now you just spread that out over the cars. So 120 to 160,000 miles per year is pretty much a car a year, no matter how we break that down. Whether we go to a 14 month cycle and try and save ourselves a car every like five, six, seven years, uh, we certainly could look at that. But on the average, we're, we're burning up a car a year is the bottom line. And that's why we took it off of capital because we think we felt it was an operational cost of how John operates his um, department. A car lasts about five years, roughly. Yeah. Maybe we could look at it when we when we have to come back and look at things again. We can look at this one. All right, any further discussion on the cruiser? Do we have a, we have a motion and a second. 
All right, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right, so that is 610. That passes. Um, I make a motion that we um, approve 65,000 for a police cruiser. Second. All those in favor? Um, just one thing. I, I, Granted, you're just going to issue a new thing that corrects the percentage and everything based on the new figure. What's that? You'll do a new, You'll sheet. Do a new sheet. With the 65,000 in there? And the new percentage, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Tim Hilchey, yep. aye. Mm -hmm. Sir aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so for the Tritown folks, we have we actually have one more thing we want to talk right. about before we get you to the Tritown. I'm sorry, we're running but, um, late. Probably be another, we'll just, hopefully, we'll maybe that. 10 we minutes at the most. Yeah, okay. right. yeah. Julie? Um, yeah. The agenda to add for, on the police budgets, canine control, but we never got a sheet. Yeah, we, we, we don't have, we sheet don't have that budget yet from okay. Greenfield, so hopefully uh, we'll get it soon, and, and we'll just vote that without John present I don't think he needs to be for that one sure okay yeah it's the animal control I just do what she tells me <laughs> <laughs> um, so I asked you since you're doing the road repair thing too can you give us an update on where we are with road expenditures to date and expected continued Sure. Whatever. So I think you um, you probably sent out my um, storm damage update report to everybody. Um, hopefully everybody on the committee got it, was able to review it. The select board got it as well. So, so far to date, we've spent uh, roughly 2.131 million, 2.131 million. And the rough estimate for the remainder was about $230,000. We finished up Roten's Pond Road. We finished Child's Cross Road. We finished Waitley Road. On to Matthews Road, depending on what the storm does tomorrow. We were supposed to be there today. Uh, got a little delayed. Hoping to get in there Wednesday or Thursday latest. Right at the town line on Matthews Road, if any of you stop and just park there and put your hazards on and walk over the bank, you'll see that the, that pipe, that culvert, is pretty much totally plugged. It is um running probably at five percent capacity so the next major event we don't want that road to wash out like i said that's uh that's 95 percent plugged steam mill road we have an emergency repair left up there mill village road at boynton road we've got a repair left there if uh if any of you ever drive to the dump on a saturday morning after a rainstorm you'll notice mud right across the road so um you'll know exactly where that is Hawks Road, we've got a lot of work to do up there with, uh, with drainage. Um, we have constantly repaired that road. Kevin's folks have been amazing going up there with the grader and repairing 18 to 30 inch ruts after rainstorms because those culverts up there are plugged, collapsing. Our 80 year old metal pipes are all coming back to haunt us within a relatively short time period. McClellan Farm Road, um, some of you have had the pleasure of going out there and seeing it with me. It is probably, I would describe it as a 50, 60, 70 foot drop. And if yeah. it is such loose, sandy soil that if we don't do the repair there, every rainstorm we're gonna lose more of it and it's only gonna be more expensive. So I wanna at least get in there and stabilize it and do the right thing. And <coughs> Depot Road is just about the same. We're losing that. Um, we've got to get in there and we've just got to do the emergency repair to stabilize that road and get it up to shape. So the total expenditure that I'm estimating right now is about 2.361 million. And we know we got about 1.58 from the state. And then you guys certainly see on your sheets uh, some other recommendations that you and the select board can nitpick um, where we want to find the funding to hopefully close out this borrowing authority in its entirety. And I'm happy to answer any questions quick if you'd like. I just don't want to delay you. Um, Casey, is, is Casey there? Can, can you let me share my screen, please? Yes, give me one sec. Thank you. Because I didn't pass it out to everybody, I will email it to everybody yep. so you can see the thing. I'm gonna share the um, thing. Did I, yeah, that one. Did I? Did we email it out to everybody? Yeah, we got it. Oh, good. We got it. Oh, everybody has it. Well, yeah, he just handed me a Okay, Julie, I think you should be able to now. Yeah. Thank you. The one from December. It never ends. I don't know what road that was supposed to be. All right. It is. It was my money. 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 It was my money.
All right, so you had 230,000-ish left to be done? Yes. And then so the total is 2.36 that you gave us up here? Yeah, 2.361. It's been fairly consistent, um, what we've been saying. Yep, I gave you the cost of pipes um, on the right-hand <coughs> side. You just actually have to scroll down on the form a little bit and that, that line will pop up. And then long-term ro uh, road work. I know Carolyn often mentions what we have pending. We're gonna have to go after Mass Works grants. We're gonna have to go after longer-term grant programs for Foxtown Road. Uh, the west end of Hawks Road, Rice's Ferry Road, Little Meadow Road where it's collapsing on the Deerfield River, County Road, Old Albany Road. Um, so little by little, we're gonna have to nitpick through this in the most cost-effective manner. So we've gotta get through our emergencies and then we can do longer-term planning to make sure we do so in a cost-effective manner. We're gonna have conversations in the Capitol Committee on how we're gonna list these roads. Um, I, I will give the example of Little Meadow Road. It is single lane. Um, it's perfectly fine to say stay single lane until we have another event um, that we then can focus and apply for the Emergency Watershed Protection Grant. And that grant is, you know, uh, inclusive of engineering, permitting, um, oversight, the whole thing, um, and there's a 20% match. So when we discuss it in the Capital Committee, we'll be talking about it, but I would say that we'll probably list it for two or three years out. So it, it, we know it's there, but it, it's really event. We could have an event tomorrow and we would be able to focus in on it. And the reason when I talk about focusing in on it, we just didn't really have an opportunity to apply for the grant when we had the July storms because you have to have this in the system within 60 days and it has to be repaired within 200 days for the program. And we just didn't, I mean, there was so much damage everywhere. This was usable road and it was fairly stable, so we're not worried about it. Um, and that had a lower priority, so that's, I'm not saying that we won't get the grant and it won't get fixed, but it's not um, serious, serious. The, the reason why John lists, like, uh, Depot Road is a potential that we have to do long-term is because there's a water pipe in there that- On the opposite side of the road, right? Yes. Yeah. You're pouring rip rap in mm -hmm. to yes. stabilize yep. the bank. Yep. Just yep. to stabilize it, but there is infrastructure there, water, a water line that we have to worry about, whereas that's not, true in McCullen Farm Road. So those roads would probably stay closed um, once they're stabilized. Um, Old Albany Road is- So when you say McClellan Farm is closed, it's closed like up past where all the houses are when mm -hmm. you go around yes. mm -hmm. by the, yeah. okay. That, it's a section beyond Norse's Field okay. uh, in East Deerfield Rail Yard uh, okay. that yeah. is closed. So you when you go around go the back way and it was always full of potholes right. anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's Got just, it. you can't pass through. How yeah. far down, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead, <coughs> but how far down Rice's Ferry Road are you looking at, just to the headmaster's house? They ran, they've run a lot of trucks through there to bring their debris to their debris pile. Um, so I was wondering, you're not looking at doing the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> Rice's Ferry Road is... Rice's Ferry Road, the one that goes... It connects the, all the way through to River Road. Well, but, it does, but it's a, yeah. it's a path. It's a dirt, oh, it's a absolutely. dirt grass path. This, yep. is, this is only... Uh, I would say like a mile up. Okay, it's, yeah, that it, makes sense. It, you know, it's just where people are accessing it for, um, you know, their wood lots or whatever. It, it's not- That's, that's all Eagle Brook right on the left yes. and it goes okay. to their, we're their not, debris we're not, yep. we're not doing that. I mean, and that's the same as Old Albany Road. We're just, you know, it's beyond the power lines to the Shelburne line. Mm -hmm. You know, is, Same is with it a, Hawks, right? You're is, it, up on that. is it problematic if there was a brush fire? Yeah. Yes, because it's not travelable anymore. But as far as us spending money, there's no, there's no grant program for that. And it's given our financial situation and, and unless we get money from the state in the second round that we would pay for some of that, we, you know, it's Do not something. Do fire districts have any access to grants for fire access for? They don't? No. Okay. No. Okay, no. I wish. Yeah. 
I, everything is really dependent on us, but we're, it's not that we're not looking all the time, Margaret. I, oh, I, I understand and we, that, we, I do. You know, I intend to put in for these expenses in the fiscal 24 supplemental budget. We collected that money that was allocated to us came out of fiscal 23 supplemental budget. Mm -hmm. So, but the damage actually occurred in July of 24. So we, you know, I have every intention to work with Lemonster coordinate with them because they have a huge amount of losses um, also uh, that we will have a supplemental budget request at the end of the year. Just one more quick question. I promise I'll hold up too long. 2021 storm damage account. Um, why was that a reimbursement? Uh, was it a grant? We um, had, yeah, we had money left over from town appropriation before. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So that's we just. Had, well, it was similar to our July storms and then they, a and F gave us a formula where we, uh, you know, had got paid more than we had expected. Okay, so clearly that could be a possible funding source. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. It, we've just saved it until we had um, another disaster. Disaster. Yeah. <laughs> and just one thing about McClellan Farm Road. I don't know who has gone out there, but um, there are like four to six sections of culvert pipe that have been washed off periodically. Uh, so that's gonna very soon be the last culvert pipe that still exists there is going to be in the ravine if we don't do something so that's yeah it's pretty serious yeah. it's actually one of those that you i don't think you really understand until you put eyes on it and then you go oh yeah that's ugly yeah uh it's it absolutely is worth a 10 minute ride for you to take a ride out there and if you don't <laughs> feel comfortable let me know and i will happily take any one of you out there and the first time you put eyes on it you'll look straight down and go Okay, I understand. Yeah. That's right. I still need to get um, and I, I just want to add that River Road is um, s s appears to be stable, but it is also on the long-term fix. Well, uh, what's problematic with that um, is that we have to separate um, the application because we have the uh, million-dollar cap on the rural mass works program. So we're going to have to separate a long-term fix on, you know, in million dollar sections, basically. Uh, and that has to be sorted out. Has any consideration, uh, uh, could there be any consideration given to a special stabilization fund specifically for road infrastructure? Right now we have a general capital stabilization fund. I'm just wondering, given, given climate change and given everything that we anticipate in the future, is that something that could potentially be considered? Um, I, the only reason I would recommend against that is because um, hopefully uh, Joe Comerford's and Nellie's bill will pass on the um, storm damage that covers these gap storms that don't qualify for federal funds. So, um, so they have a bill pending for $250 million in a trust that would be administered between the Senate, okay. the House members, MEMA, and the governor's office. You would apply for immediate reimbursement. They would reimburse you within 60 days out of a $200 million, $250 million account. So that's pending. It, it, that's it's, pending. It's 2506, Senate Bill 2506 and House 4181. I've um, testified for it and um, um, you know, we've written letters of support, and it seems like statewide, based on our MMA conference, everybody is in support of it. So it should, it's already made it out of committee, so um, I think it's going to happen pretty soon. Next hurdle is, is funding it, right? Uh, well, they have, they have they a funding have, mechanism already, already applied they in the bill. Applied? Yes, they yes, do. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So that could be a drastic measure for us for the future. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and generally, we don't have this much damage at once. I mean, I, I, my first event was 2005, and we've, you know, it seems like every other year or every couple of years we have, you know, road damage. And you don't, it never comes to the finance committee because we just handle it. You know, I apply for grants and we get it fixed. It's just that this time there was so much and it was just all at once. It wasn't over a couple different events, it was, you know, January, t uh, July 10th, J uh, July 16th, and then the July 21st storms. <coughs> it was right after each other, and what we were, repair work was washed out between July 10th and the 21st, and it just, it was such a mess. Um, it was truly overwhelming, even though we have a lot of experience with it. Yeah. 
and gain <laughs> more just about every year. I know. That's why. It just it just keep that in the back of your mind. If something does come in this infrastructure bill, it would it, be a, a way to actually have secured savings locally to be able to put towards something uh, like the that. O the only reason I, I, we get song. criticized when we put too many pots of money aside and people say, well, why are you sitting on so much money? Well, and you've got a 2021 storm damage account. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of, that's what we'll feed when Brenda well, gets the check. I was going to say, although that's a special revenue fund, a little bit easier to manage than yeah, having, stabilization. having a lot of stabilization accounts. And you've got one right now, right? The capital stabilization? Two. We have, Two. We, are, we, we have three. We have a general stabilization, we have a capital stabilization, and then we have a rent stabilization account oh, yeah. that's applicable to the EMS building. Oh. Yep. We have all kinds of squirrel accounts. We just don't like to mention them. We're Polish. <laughs> so there's nothing to vote here. This was just an update for us on the status of the, um, the road repairs and the dollar values. Um, thank you very much you for coming by. Yeah, I think More we're good. More questions are good. Um, <coughs> anybody have? I, I'm sorry. Got, go ahead. I got one more question. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, it, it, when we voted for the, the authorization for borrowing, does that seem like that's going to be necessary after all or no? So that's a question I have for the select board for later in the meeting, but okay. I, that, that's can, why I actually, wanted to talk answer. about the town warrant, because I want to make sure that there's an item on the town warrant for rescinding there, there, any extra. There is, there is, and our intention is hopefully to um, uh, send back all five million. We, okay. yeah. uh, the reason why we had to go through it, because at that point we had no numbers from the state yet. And, and it's not as much as we had hoped, but it's more than we were worried about at one time. I mean, John talks about grinding teeth. It's, you know, I've been grinding teeth too because I, I, you know, the amount of damage here. But we did get a decent amount and I feel comfortable that Joe and Natalie will be advocating for us and we have an opportunity for this. There's still $5 million that haven't been distributed and we are still spending money and um, our legislative delegation is aware of that. So hopefully we'll be in the next round as well. Um, we were just worried that we might not see the money before June 30th. And um, hopefully a &F is cutting us a check and we will have that in the account and we can then comfortably. So. Have we seen that yet? No, we have not seen it yet. Um, have you gotten the contract? You've gotten the contract or no? No, it's not a contract. They just send us a check. <laughs> oh, no, it should be a state contract. Everything should be done through a state contract, right? For the emergency funds? I was just wondering if you got the check because that's your commitment. You know, that's the yeah. commitment of funding. Not yet. No, I mean, I'm assuming it will be distributed like they did for the July of 21 storms, which they just send us a check. And hopefully... It just shows up in our account. account. Yes. Yeah. Which oh, they're just doing it. Yeah, that's, it's how, just they, that's how they did it. For wow. Someone. So, okay. yeah, I mean, I'm assuming one. it's the same way. So, um, hopefully, we'll have mm. again additional uh, funding rounds. So, it is our intention as a select board to return all five million in borrowing. It's Excellent. The, there's already a placeholder there. Good. It's just the number isn't there. Okay. Um, any more questions? We, we, Tritown folks have been waiting for a while. So any more questions for John before he goes? No? Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Thanks. All right. John, we're ready for Tritown. Right. Sorry about that. Come on. <coughs> Oh, sure. Yeah, this grab a seat. So the, the one pointer is to make sure you talk into the yep. microphone so that it gets recorded. Got it. And, yeah. yeah. Understand. Thank you. I will. Okay. <laughs> if we're in. What, what number is Tritown? So, um, so the Tritown Beach budget is 630-5410. Thank you, John. Just so that we put this on the right order, I move that we recommend the sum of thirty-four thousand eight hundred forty-two for Tritown Beach account number six thirty fifty-four ten. Second. Second. No. <laughs> you can have that. All right. Jim and John. Hi. All right. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. For those who don't know me, I'm Ken Kovac. This is Diane Kalatoski. We're two of the. Um, 
current four, I'm yeah. sorry, we're two of the current four commissioners that are, are serving. Uh, Deerfield has three commissioners. Waitley typically is supposed to have two. We've been having one Waitley com commissioner in the uh, two and a half to three years that we've been reopened. So uh, we're still working through those logistics. Um, the budget you see before you is a budget that's based on um, an 85-day season, com which will commence with uh, the Memorial Day weekend with any kind of luck. Uh, the plan would be for the Memorial Day weekend to be open those three days, um, eight hours a day. <clears throat> and then the first two weekends in June, we'd be opening Saturday and Sunday for five hours each day. And then the following week, we would go to full seven-day operations. Um, our staffing model has changed uh, from last year to, to, the, uh, to what we're proposing for next year. We had uh, lifeguards and gatekeepers on staff last summer, um, and we really need to have two guards on staff or on, on duty at all times. So we're moving to a two guard and less, um, less use of gatekeepers uh, to keep the, keep the facility open and properly staffed. Uh, <clears throat> so this budget that you're reviewing uh, is based on that general outline, and um, we are, you know, also we have general expenses. We have electricity, we have water, we have upkeep on the buildings, we have um, a hope to be treating finally the vegetation in the pond that keeps encroaching. But we've been in a two year, two and a half year now study that's been proposed. Uh, the Waitley Conservation Commission has signed off on a management plan, but we have to go through, I think it's called the National Heritage Foundation for Protection of Environment, uh, uh, Endangered Species, uh, NHESP or SCP, something like that. Um, there is a, an identified endangered plant species at the, at the beach. It's, it's a mini bulrush, and it's so small that I don't think I've ever seen it, but we've had a full survey done mapping it along the shorelines, and it, uh, was, it had started to encroach actually into the beach area when the beach got shut down for about two and a half years. It was shut down for two summers, and when we reopened, um, we were having this study conducted. Uh, we're still in the midst of getting final approval on a management plan, and we're hoping that we'll be able to treat this coming season. Um, so that's, that's a number that's carried in the budget. Um, it's, uh, it, I think it says environmental study, but it's actually the uh, management plan would be for the treatment of the vegetation. It should be about $4,000. That's why it's in the budget. That will hopefully not be in perpetuity. We're not sure exactly how many times we have to treat and how many years in a row we have to treat, or if it's every other year, the uh, final plan will get final when we have the final plan submitted and, and approved by the uh, National Heritage people. We'll, uh, we'll have a better understanding. Uh, so, uh, that being said, I'm happy to take any questions if you saw things in the budget that caused questions. I should point out the budget is a reduction this year over uh, previous years. We, what, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. What is um, Les Waitley's portion? The Waitley, not, what is that? Waitley pays 23% of the total I see. Okay. budget. All right. So we pay 77%, they pay 23%. Yeah. And how, how, we, uh, how we arrived at that percentage, I can't say. I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't either. Um, Margaret, Waitley owns the property, uh, just so you know. Um, this is actually a district, yep. but we have chosen to pull it in and call it a special revenue fund. So that's how we treat it. I bill Waitley for their portion at the beginning of the year, and then we, we run all the expenditures through this fund. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So, 
Okay. Um, total expenses from revenues, what's the difference? It, it's the, let me back up, it's the 34,482. I didn't sit here with my calculator and try and add it up. Does that <laughs> include the 10,900 of receipts? Um, it, it does as a reduction against the overall. So then we would add up the 48,525, the 45,250. What you would add is the uh, 48,525 plus, um, I gotta find the total, 7,000. Oh, seven, yeah, there it is, right. 76,25, and then subtract out the projected revenues. And that gives you 45,250? That gives a number of, uh, yeah, I think it is 45,250. Yeah, I, I did test the numbers. Um, because it's a special revenue fund, all of the revenues from this operation go into that fund, and then all the expenditures come out. So you'll see what they have for receipts and then the expenses. And then, of course, the other revenue item is the amount that Waitley. Um, right, I was just wondering how it, it worked on this spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. Then I, I do have some questions. Um, the, you, it looks like you've eliminated the weekend lifeguard. Um, um, and the gatekeeper is down, so who's going to be watching the gate? The lifeguards will be manning the gate in addition to their regular patrol, I mean, regular duties on station. So um, the, the traffic, and, and I'm not down there every day, but the traffic at the beach is not. It's not that you need a gatekeeper eight, 10 hours a day, sitting there essentially watching the, the sand blow, <laughs> blow mm -hmm. around um, in many instances because the, I, I don't know when the busy times are. Diane gets there more frequently than I do in season. Um, and uh, we, you know, in, in consultation with the other commissioners came to the realization that we don't need to, we need two guards more than we need a guard and a gatekeeper. And the gatekeeper, gatekeeping function can be handled yeah. by the guards. I think the gatekeeper, speak into the mic. gatekeeper um, kept the riffraff coming to check out the, the beach that weren't residents. And that's kind of, that was good. But we did add a new gate at the entrance now. So we're trying to make it look a little bit more private. You know, it's open to citizens, but it's not open to the public out the highway. Oh, that's great. Um, and the weekend lifeguard is gone. Uh, the, basically, I, I consolidated into a number of lifeguard positions, John, rather than label them weekend because they work. They work some weekends. That they're on and off. We, we stagger the weekends so that all the guards have, and, you know, it's equitably shared for weekend duty. So rather than, uh, these were all <clears throat> titles I inherited <laughs> in many instances. So I'm trying to clean it up and just make it the guards. And, and uh, when I get the, the spreadsheet <coughs> sent to me to propose the budget, I'm, I'm asked to, or at least there are notes on the margins, don't change. Try not to change too much because Brenda has to match them up. And I, I know from experience that it's a pain in the neck if somebody's inserted four or five rows on you. Um, so I'm just trying to work within those confines, John. Okay, Brenda. one more question. I don't want to monopolize the discussion. Supplies is up from up to 3,500 from 750. The, um, the supplies, the problem I have, I had when I was pulling this together is that um, the expenses over the years have been Hamshaw Lumber for some things and W.E. Mason for other supplies and I had all these different things supply, providing supplies and I had to, to get it into this spreadsheet I had to get it consolidated into just one general supplies line item John. Well where is it in prior years then? Um, so so in, in prior years before 2024 um, because this was a district there were some accounts some bank accounts that were completely off of off of the books right and and so some of their expenditures were run through those bank accounts and not through through the budget okay right so That's why now it's blank. now yeah. everything goes through the budget right. yep 
Um, when, when the lifeguards are paid now, are they just paid from you? Because before, previously, they would get a split check. Half yeah. Of some from Wheatley. Yeah, they'd and get paid $10.30 yeah. from Deerfield and $1.72 from Wheatley. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, that doesn't happen anymore. Okay. <laughs> so, because I was wondering about that with the. Okay, so yeah. everything's just through the. Staff. So they're all town of Deerfield employees. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a lot easier. Jim, then David. Okay, well, my question is very simple. Could each of you spell your name, please? <laughs> Cutterback is C U double D E B A C K. Okay, Ken, right? Mm -hmm. Ken, yes. Yeah, Ken. Diane with one N, Kolokoski. There's a lot of Kolokoskis in town. <laughs> <laughs> well, K but they all spell it different ways. <laughs> we do? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I think they're all the same. <laughs> K-O-L-A-K-O-S-K-I. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Now it's David. I was just going to try to move the question because it's a nice 15% okay. saving. <laughs> yep. Any <laughs> further for discussion? All right, it's been moved and seconded for Tritown Beach expense at 34,842. All those in favor? That's unanimous 700. Do you want to make, do you guys want to do that? Thank you. Okay. Um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. I guess I'm not on the mic. So just wanted to thank you very much for all the work you've done um, volunteering to turn this around and get it together. Thank you, Brenda, for the accounting part of it. And thank you to the staff and the guards for making a nice, safe place for our residents and children to come and swim. It's a, it's a big turnaround. So thank you very much for that work. It was a lot sure. of work. We're getting there. Yep. I know it's a lot, lot to do still, but great work. Yes. Second, all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Okay. I really appreciate all yep. Summer swim? Yep, summer swim program is the next budget, and that's 630-5400. And that is solely a Deerfield operation, the swim program. So just so you know, that's, that's not in conjunction with Waitley. Correct. I will move to recommend six thousand three hundred ten dollars for FY twenty five for summer swim program account six thirty fifty four hundred. Second. Discussion. This is this is really a a, a pretty simple budget. Uh, we've got two instructors and a few uh, miscellaneous expenses, and some of the costs are offset um, by the revolving fund that we have where the revenues are, are uh, deposited. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead, Mark. I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to say I, I learned how to swim at Tritown, so I thank you very much for keeping this program around. Also, with the uh, decline of the so-called like community pool or community swimming, um, less people uh, actually are, are, are adequate at swimming. So thank you very much for doing this. Okay, great work. I feel the same. My kids all learned to swim. From, yeah. As did mine. Thank you. As did Thank mine. you. <laughs> is it a rec program or is it, um, I mean, no. do people go and pay for classes? People pay so, for it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But they truly learn to swim. So it's, I mean, it is a <laughs> life skill. It's the yeah. It is a life skill. I became a competitive swimmer after learning how to swim nice. in the town. So, yeah. Very nice. It's nice. yeah. great. Yeah. No, we, it's, it's not a rec program, but it's, uh, it's definitely attended, and uh, it, we're, we're starting to build back. Last summer is the first time in three or four years that we've had a, a swim <coughs> program. And Great. Looking forward to this summer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous, 700. I'll make a motion to approve the summer swim program. Uh, Line 630-5400 for $6,310. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you much all. for coming. Thanks again for your work. Have a great night. You too.
We got like 25 minutes left. We still good. <laughs> um, so I had put on our agenda town meeting warrant um, just from the point of view of having a, a list of the articles that you have. Casey, do you have a, a list yet of the? Um, give me a second. I do have a list. I was just doing an, a review of it while um, Ken was talking. Give me a second. I just need to okay. send it to myself. I'm working on two do, different screens We'll do right something now. else and then come back to that. <laughs> um, do we want to do some of the select board salaries? We yes. certainly can. So it's 122-5100. I make a motion to approve select board salaries account 122-5100 for $16,000. Second. Any discussion? Stop. Any discussion? There's, I was going to say nope. there's no change. It's been yeah, the same no for change. the last uh, yeah. six, hey. six years. All those in years. favor? Yep. Uh, unanimous. I just have one zero. question, but it was it was really quick. First of all, you all earn your money at ten times over, and and I appreciate everything you do. Um, <coughs> just one question: the elected officials do are not um, subscribers to the town's health insurance, correct? Correct. Uh, we eliminated that back in uh, two thousand eight, eight or nine, I think. <laughs> I've been gone for a long time. Thank you. We tried to double this at our meeting, but it just didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. That was one of my first things that I wanted to do, Margaret. Smart. Next. Oh, so did, like you, board did, admin did, did you did you did yeah, you vote it? it? Passed. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, oh, Have you, guys you know what? Uh, we, yeah, we we already, we okay. already voted it. Okay. Yeah. So the next. Uh, Budget is 122-5400. You're going to skip Jim? the select board staff salaries because we're not ready for that yet. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, so 122-5400 for select board and administrator expense. Do we have a motion? I move that, to recommend the sum of $21,200 for select board and administrator expense account number one. To Second. All right. Can I just make one quick comment? Uh, yeah. Casey, Casey wants to change, and I don't know if they're uh, an act of God is needed for this, but she wanted to change it from select board and administrator expense to administration expense. Yes. Well, that requires more line, more uh, uh, letters. I'm not sure I can fit it all in, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do a slash? <laughs> we can take the and out. <laughs> or select board administration. You don't have to have the and in there. There you go. I think right. That would work. right. That'll save ink. Okay. We can <laughs> try. <Save ink. laughs> I just think it would it reflects better sort of the there's a number of other staff members that are part of this budget. So. Absolutely. Yep. Makes perfect sense. It's hence, hence the increase. <laughs> Obviously, we've got a planner now and uh, other people going, having dues, other meetings, other trainings. So that's why it is. So to, to Trevor's point, there are some increases that you'll see in this budget. The first one is in meetings. Um, we, in order for us to particularly connect with both state and federal uh, resources for grants, um, we go to more meetings now and more people go to meetings so that we can better understand and come up with a team approach to some of these grants. Um, and we spread that. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm yelling at the monsters that live in my house right now. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them barking. No. <laughs> I could, yeah, but so I essentially we see meetings as the first increase and that really reflects, again, that number of meetings that we might see um, to better help us get to resources we don't have right now. Um, training with more people, we need to allocate a little bit more for training. 
for everyone. Um, one of the things I think you've heard from other department heads is an increase in postage. We're seeing that across the board. Um, and it does impact, there are times where we have to do a butter notifications as well as for, for project as well projects as well as our regular postage. So you'll see a slight increase in that. Um, emergency planning and miscellaneous stayed the same. Um, staff expense went up a little bit to better accommodate the expenses we see with various people doing the work that they need to do. Um, subscriptions so went up what, slightly. What kind of expenses are staff expenses? Can you just give they a couple of examples? They range from that? mileage to um, other types of expenses you would see Desks in your normal chairs. operations. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Sorry. Um, subscriptions? Subscriptions went up a little bit. We do have to subscribe to certain items like certain types of mag even magazines yeah, online require a subscription now yep and, that's, um, and that's then just the, dues have gone up as well okay yeah and the subscription is just the for the recorder to come here to the town hall yep okay do um anybody have any questions go ahead margaret i'm i i'd like to make a request on this can i see um the detailed expenditure report for fy 23 and the two date to fy 24 and the backup for the fy 25 request um i'm sure they can provide the backup for the fy 25 request you'll see in <coughs> fy 24 um that Several, it, it, it'll be hard to look at because several of the individuals that went to the MMA conference did not um, ask the town to reimburse any of their meals or any of their mileage or, um, I well, can't. Then I guess, then I so guess so it, it'll look a little skewed, but but I can certainly give you that. that FY23, FY23 would, would be fine for the, full, for the full fiscal year. Okay. Okay, thanks. Sure. Somebody else had a question down there. Go yeah, ahead, John. This, no, I'm related to this budget, I, but I, and maybe I should know this, but I looked at the actual for this account, and the 15950 was appropriated, and we spent <coughs> almost $12,800 through January. What's the process, and maybe I should know this, but what, what if you need to spend $4,000? You're going to go over budget. Do you... Can you say, oh, we can't go to the meetings, we don't have the money, or do you go over budget? I don't know, what happens? Well, if, I mean, if we had to, you'd ask for it, we would, I mean, if we knew something was coming, like we have more staff now and we want them all to go to MMA, if we didn't budget for it, we would ask for a transfer or transfer it from another account at the end of the year, but just like any other line, right? Is that what you're asking? I, I didn't mean this account, I mean any account. Yeah, Not just, just, just like a reserve, just, reserve fund transfer. You go for or a transfer, a, okay. Yeah. Yeah, technically. Or, or, or shift it around at the end of the year. You know, you're allowed if you have, if you're at the end of the year, to, if you underspend some line items to change, you know. Line items within this account. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, not line items right. within the account. So you can do appropriation transfers from May 1st to July 15th. And those are, those are transfers from other appropriations that, that have money left over. Um, prior to that, and sometimes instead of that, um, they'll come to the finance committee for a reserve fund transfer request. Yeah. yeah technically, lines in the budget cannot be overspent. I think the accountant would really frown on, on that. Um, so yeah, the reserve fund transfer, um, yeah. it would be the way yeah. to go before S May. Some accounts are overspent, and I allow that to happen because I know that we're going to do a reserve fund transfer when the time comes. <coughs> for how long? Yeah, it depends. Okay. Like, for instance, general insurance has been over, okay. but um, they haven't issued their dividend yet, which sometimes gets offset against that, or... Um, or credits. Or the credits. So I'll allow that for a while, and then at some point we'll, we'll address it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for answering my Yeah, I haven't ignored it. If you do appropriations <laughs> of, from different... Different 
online items? Do you come through the finance committee for that or only for reserves? The uh, select board and the finance committee sign off on that, but the select board gets it first. Is there a policy for what expenses are allowed for meetings as far as, so the example I can think of, I remember a couple years ago we were talking about MMA and people go and it's a long way. So you go and you spend the night before and typically they, we pay for the hotel the night before. And then the discussion came up that some, some people, somebody, I don't remember what, but there was discussion about whether or not you could stay the night after mm -hmm. MMA. And it ends at, you know, mid afternoon or something. So you probably have time to come. I don't know. But I, 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 it, it, the, the specific example doesn't matter. I'm just wondering if there's a policy regarding um, what expenditures and especially with hotel rooms, whether you can do the second night in the hotel room. I don't, I don't think there's a specific policy, right? I think it the really board hasn't promulgated one. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just a matter of looking at what we we start at seven o'clock in the morning, and mm -hmm. so you know I feel like it's not really realistic for us to not be there the night before. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And and the night before, then, I don't think anybody was yeah. arguing right. it. It was the and night then, after that that pe well, people were wondering about. Well, I mean this this year. Uh, we we had business right up till almost seven o'clock again oh, okay. in the evening, and you know to check out of your room in the middle of the day is really inconvenient because you know we start at seven o'clock in the morning, and mm -hmm. there's just no time to do that. But I mean, some people do go home, but yeah, uh, you know. this year I ended up going home. Yeah, the, yeah, Trevor came home this year. Trevor came home, but I didn't stay late I did for as the well. other stuff. Yep. Yeah, he, he he did he missed out on some of the late stuff, but I, it's. I mean, I felt it was really important to be there this year because, you know, that was my time to connect with the green, new Greenfield mayor mm -hmm. and having that, you know, extra hour in the evening with her was... Oh, it's absolutely a valuable meeting yeah. and the contacts that you make and everything. Yeah. I don't think anybody's arguing against that. Yeah. It, it was oh. just, I was just wondering if there was well, a, we a use policy that or a discussion as a networking, about... That, as a networking effort. And, mm -hmm. and, and I can say this year we used it to connect with the Greenfield mayor. Um, you know, it was the first time all three of us met with her and, you know, that we talked about some of the issues that we had, like with SCEMS and some of the other shared programs, like the PHE grant um, that is so hugely important and impactful on our budget and, you know, animal control officer and, you know, just some things like that. I mean, she's truly overwhelmed. She's got so much, it's a huge learning curve, brand new person coming in, but it was our opportunity to see her person to person, and I, I feel that was hugely valuable. Tim, you yeah, we, have, we also, well, this year, um, we carpooled, so basically saved 20, uh, $210 because one person <laughs> didn't drive their car, so that's a night in the hotel, so it was a wash. But um, we also got a chance to talk to um, Mayor DeSorger about SCEMS, which is you know, one of the things that we're concerned about is yeah. mutual aid and does it cost us money? You know, does it, you know, so it gave us a chance to at least make her aware that this is an issue that we're gonna be discussing with her in the coming year, so. Um, in years before, we've used the opportunity to connect with the CAPE because we've um, wanted to um, they have a lot of, it seems like it would be a different kind of communities, but actually we have a lot of similarities. And we asked their legislative delegation to work with our le legislation delegation so that we can have more oomph behind some of the issues that we have. I mean, it, it, there's about 1,300 select board members that go there. And, you know, for us, we participate on a regional level anyway. Like the three of us plan, are on the planning committee for our Western region meetings, but it gives us an opportunity to reach out to, like I said, the Cape especially, mm -hmm. but some of the central communities that we don't, there are rural. They don't see that often, yeah. Yeah, and we talk about school stuff mostly because, you know, it's such a huge part of our budget and, you know, asking them to support like the legislation, the rural school legislation and stuff like that. So I, I have to say it's very valuable. It's, is, does it actually bring us money back? Not. 
not like the, you know, we always are very careful that we get the spread on the work uh, shops so that we get the absolute number of credits, for maximum credits for our liability <laughs> insurance, but um, I, I feel like it returns to us whatever the value is. It's professional okay. development, you know, and, and everybody needs that, so I think we all as a town could do more of that in, in each of our boards, but so I think it's the one time of the year where we get to go and really get that professional development on all the things and looking forward. Um, the one policy is no alcohol, so can't, can't buy drinks. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You can buy them, but they're on yeah. I mean, we're, That's we're on your own dime. I know a lot of people think that meetings are, you know, party time, but we, number one, as Trevor said, we don't really drink. and anywhere and it is a you know you start at seven o'clock in the morning and you go till seven or eight at night and we're really tired I mean it's yeah. a long day one thing we want to one policy we are thinking about implementing is a per diem rather than keeping your receipt from you know eatily in the morning when you get your egg sandwich and then you got to have another one for coffee and if you if you lose them you know you you lose mm -hmm. them and you're come up with a flat fee that says yeah. you should be able to go here and spend $75 throughout the day to eat and, you know, And whatever. if you've still got your receipts in your pocketbook like I do, you know, I haven't turned it in. You know, stuff like that. And it'll save staff time so that Pat Kroll doesn't have to chase 50, 60 pieces of paper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Casey, you had a comment? No, I was just going to um, also identify the fact that when staff go it's an opportunity for us to connect with vendors that we might be interested in exploring information on for instance software um, financial software that, that was one of the things that i was looking at when i was there was connecting about financial software because it's not at some point this is going to come up in the next couple of years and the more i'm able to get information to share the better the financial department heads can make um, their own evaluations so we can connect the dots. Yeah. I found the Finance Committee Association meetings to be very valuable too. Yeah. So, David, you had a question? No, I, I was just struck by that the, the, there's no need to defend. Oh, no, no, we weren't. No, no, no. Um, well, yeah. yeah, because I, mean, but, but, because I think it is a totally valuable meeting. Um, but, I, but reflecting on last year, I think that. Um, I think it was last year. Definitely yeah, been it was on last this. year. I've only been on this committee. One yeah. year. Um, I, I, I think there was a pretty strong sense of the, not, this is a powerless committee, but I think there was a very strong. No, it's not. Well, okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's encouraging. I, I think there was a very strong sense of the committee. I can't, because maybe there was something else, that, that, that you should only have one hotel night for a Boston meeting if you're only meeting on one day right. during the meeting. But so the schedule a, that we saw yeah, ended it, at like one in the afternoon. So if you're meeting until seven at night, yeah. then then that's understandable. And it's a, a two-day thing yeah. at least, yeah. It's I think, you know, hang given, on a sec, let's given, say, Margaret. Given budget limitations, I can remember a long, long time ago when I was in Sunderland and we had very significant budget issues um, that we all cut back to one night. So I think that it should be in the board's discretion to to be able to do that if they feel that they can. I, I agree, the MMA conference is a, very, is a very good conference for local officials to go to. So, yeah, so I have, I have no problem with the okay. MMA hey. conference. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. So la last year after we had this conversation, we asked if a policy could be generated. So could, could we make one? I mean, even if the policy's short? Um, a, a, around you know acceptable travel policies like how much time after a session ends you know uh, it, every company I've worked for has a policy where they, they will say like whether or not you're you know able to get reimbursed for a hotel or not uh, for uh, travel for work um, so I, I don't think it's an unreasonable thing to ask um, it's also you know not not something that the the committee can I guess make you do but right. you know I'm, I'm just wondering like you know it's not yeah. worth the time Okay. Not really, I mean, we're really not. It's a one time a year we go, and um, oh, well, okay, yeah. I mean, if it's one time a year, I, I'm just yeah. wondering for like more broadly. I, I, yeah. I, I think the interpretation is that we're we're coming at you for MMA, and that's not what it's what no, what no, it is. I but I'm yeah, just wondering for like you know it it I, I, I it, it, would, yeah. It would be needed if it was um, you know you went multiple times of the year and you were kind of overstaying, and it's it's kind of this being abused, but I don't, 
I think for, for the amount of time to create the policy and pass it, it really wouldn't save us any money. I don't think. I don't, I don't think it means just about the MMA. There are other, I mean, a travel other staff. That's, ex uh, I'm talking about a TNE policy. policy. Yeah. Yeah. The other staff? Just, just in, uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm in, in general, a, a travel and expense pol policy. I don't know if the town has one. In fact, the personnel, personnel manual probably has. Uh, I think we this don't have even one. came up. We will, hopefully. Oh, okay. It's in the bylaw. I mean, all we have is a bylaw. Oh, okay. Right now. Yeah. I think it only came up because, like, a certain amount was budgeted, and then it sounded, and then, I don't think more was spent than what was budgeted. And it was kind of like, oh, well, so-and-so decided to go too, and this, and so it more felt like, well, if this was what the plan was, like, when should we say no? When, when is the right time to say I, no? I agree with that, yes. I think what we had found, and you know, I think the, our, our department took on some of the uh, costs, but we were thinking if planning members come, we should put that in the planning budget versus the select board budget so there you know if any other departments come because it is very valuable for for all kinds of different uh, departments to go I, we see finance committee members there and all kinds of other things but um, th yeah we, we put them in the buckets that they're there so it doesn't all show up in our our account so that makes sense for sure but I agree in the best of all worlds we'd have a T&E policy and uh, you know it's always finding finding the staff member to, to write the policy and get it approved and um, you know so it's a goal let's work on it no no I'm just saying all we have is a bylaw we don't have a personnel manual um, that's something that's that's been talked about and I think Casey's been working on for a while so mm -hmm. yeah yep. that's where we'd see the travel yeah, maybe this is the wrong venue for okay. that ask, but I think it's a very reasonable thing, so I will ask at the right venue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further discussion on this item? It's just, uh, just we all um, are keeping in mind, I'm sorry, we all are keeping in mind that we have a $300,000 budget gap. Exactly. So it's just another line that will have to yeah, be revisited. We're all, we're come back to all of it. Yeah. Or yep. Todd? Huh. So only 300? So oh, that's before school. No capital. That's before the, that's before before. No capital. Right. Oh, no that's capital. After you've depleted. What's in the capital account now? No, that, that's not, not spending any money on capital at all. Right. Okay. So, whatever the capital committee is thinking about, there's, it's 300,000 plus that that we're in the hole. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been worse <coughs> before. Yeah. Yeah, we can work on this. We'll it's early. early. All right. Uh, any further discussion on this item? All those in favor? All those opposed? Abstentions? All right. That passes six. Um, did we vote on this already? Six yes. one zero. Okay. What day did, did we vote? What was the count? Six one zero. Okay. I I couldn't remember if I. I don't. I guess I didn't write it down. All right, never mind. All right, let's try and do at least one more. Legal, okay. 151. Sure. Legal. Would you like me to explain legal? Oh, gosh. What's the number? 151-5300. <laughs> let's get a motion out there first. For 105,000. I move motion? to recommend the sum of $105,000 for legal expenses, account number 151-5300. Do we have a second? Second. Everybody found the page yet? Yeah. All right, we're ready. Go for it, Casey. Okay. So what you see here Primarily, I won't start at the top, I'll start in the middle. So primarily, the administrative fee has increased from 5,500 a month to 6,000 a month. So that's the first increase you see. Um, when Brenda and I discussed this and really tried to take a stab at what, what seemed like an equitable approach, knowing that where our budget was tight, um, we tried to take into account um, litigation and the labor council employment elements of this budget. So we are planning, and I, I say budget because budget, 
you budget to the best of your ability, um, not knowing all of the elements that will be in front of you in that fiscal year. So what I suggested to the board was decreasing the litigation costs from 25,000 to 18,000. Um, but we also are facing several contract negotiate renegotiations. Um, and so we can expect to see an increase in our label labor council costs. Sorry. Um, so that's really what you're seeing here. And to the best of our ability and basically our, our <coughs> guesstimate, when I discussed this with Brenda, we tried to present something that tried to balance, that we tried to find a balance. Yeah, the, the fact of the matter is this town is doing more and more and more. And when you do more, you end up with additional legal costs. Um, right. The, just for your benefit, uh, the administrative costs is a, is a set fee that we pay for for most things, Margaret, and then the litigation and the labor council costs are billed by the hour. This so is you have a retainer? For the the yes, retainer is a retainer. 2000 yeah. That has been uh, relatively <clears throat> inexpensive or the mo least expensive way to go, I guess is to explain, you know, because then we can call up, at, you know, randomly if we have questions and stuff like that. And they do trainings, um, you know, like the open meeting law training and stuff, updates, that kind of thing. If you saw their invoices, you'd say, wow, because it's like three pages of we did this, 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 and this, and it comes down to 5,500. Yeah. They do a lot for us. The, uh I'm sorry, with Labor Council, do you also take advantage of, um, of training um, at no cost for things like um, discrimination, you know, discrimination training, harassment training, things like that? When we have the availability, Margaret, we do. And in fact, we're exploring a new opportunity through the COG to share some costs um, for things like that. Um, it's, we're still in the beginning stages of learning how this could work, but it could save us a little bit of money in terms of training. On the other hand, certain types of training are very specific, and this really is about labor counsel. This isn't necessarily um, training. Training is often, for those types of things, is often seen in the contracted services budget. This is really for you know, what we see for actual labor costs for different types of questions we might have. Separate from school labor contract lawyer negotiations? Yeah. Yes. How are we looking for this year? For trying? For lawsuits? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, are we on track for the 96,000? I think we're, a l if I remember oh. right, we're a little over on one of the line items that I can't remember which one, or we're going to be over. Um, you're right on. Pretty much on, oh, overall, you're pretty much right on target. Uh, okay. All right. It really depends on the busyness and where certain litigation is, as well as what kind of um, assistance we might need for planning, zoning, or conservation, because that's also something that is a separate cost. So that's why you see it as litigation with a with a dash. Yeah, we've we've overspent the labor. Mm -hmm. um, budget this year it was budgeted at five thousand we've spent five thousand eighty but you know you just never know when you're going to run across labor issues you can't budget for everything um, so that one is over um, but the litigation line item is a little under so i mean we ha even have to have a lawyer for a dog hearing because you know they had lawyers and it was appealed you know that kind of thing i mean that's a random one-off kind of thing we have ongoing litigation with steam mill and you know other things like that That'll go on yeah. <laughs> I wonder if, if we've been under appropriated every year we put some on the field. Um, yeah I wonder if we're doing the same thing again we're really kidding ourselves at 105,000 if that's too low we have ongoing litigation, though, that, yep. that we don't have right now that was fairly significant. 
didn't we have? We had that park problem, right? Mm -hmm. But is that done? The yeah, park? I think that's. Park's done. Park's yes. done, right? Park's that's done away. That's settled. Park's done, yeah. Yep. That's, that was the, the reason why 23 was high, was the park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But there's always something, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it's the best guesstimate. I kind of, I personally feel like trusting Brenda and Casey to come up with a yeah. reasonable number. Yeah, if if right. you're comfortable yeah, with this true. number, you, you guys are good with this number, I assume. <laughs> I was just that's asking true. if it was a nice That's sentence. true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous, 700. You guys already voted it? Yes. Yes, we did. You guys have enough oomph to do one more, the last one? Sure. This one is pretty simple. 155, yep. 5400. Yep. Two pages. IT hardware, 6000. <coughs> Make a motion approve IT hardware, one fifty count 155, 5400 for $6,000. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Uh, really, it's it's been at five thousand for a while. Um, we brought it up to six thousand because we now have additional staff. Um, computers are aging. I know mine is 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 getting older. Um, things like that. Uh, it is. I don't know if there was something else you had in mind. Just the cost for for elements. Uh, you know, it's some of your the parts of your. IT that you have to buy are more expensive now and more complex. Any discussion? Go ahead. Is, is this for the, the whole town? Yeah. So, so, it's, it's, I mean, it's for the staff that really here. is it here. Working. Because yeah. the police it's department low. handles their own. Uh, okay. Um, South County EMS, the wastewater treatment plant handles their own. Highway does um, any yeah. kind of um, IT too. costs for the highway department goes through their budget, that kind of thing. Okay, so it's really just in there. Just yeah. here. It's for here. Okay, and this cool. covers all uh, technology replacement? Yeah, six thousand dollars for all technology replacement. It's this is a pretty low. We, we keep it pretty <laughs> minimal. Yes, <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> quick. It's mostly phased, Margaret. Okay, okay. We replace things. We we do have an inventory, and we have we have discussed working um, more in a phased approach, and that had started before I got here. Um, but yeah, we try to keep it as as pared down as possible. Yeah. I, you know, uh, we did add a computer for the town clerk right. because we had separated that department. But I think the town clerk de uh, budget yeah. took that. Whenever there's like the a large server, we usually come for a capital request on if it's over ten thousand for like a large server or something right. like that. We would kind this, of separate that this out is for people's desks. Yeah, so essentially, it's for desktop budget, and it's, hardware it's that they use yeah. for to to really do their jobs in the office. Does, does anybody have any questions about this? <laughs> no? Okay. All those in favor? All right. Okay. Great. Was it 700? Right. Those were all the ones that we had planned to talk about. Um, we will meet again two weeks from this evening unless we see each other tomorrow and the next day and the next day at the various meetings. And they we are posted for tomorrow and thir Thursday in case we all show up. Okay. If we end up with a quorum, somebody has to take notes. I can't go. <coughs> there no quorum allowed I can't, tomorrow. I can't go tomorrow. We're not having a quorum. Okay. Oh, okay. So we definitely Thursday. don't have a quorum tomorrow, so we don't have to worry about it. It's at the high school, right? Yes. It's at the high school. Are they hybrid still or not? And Thursday is, yeah. Thursday is at the elementary school, right? Right. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Yeah. Yep. Is that hybrid too? Yes. Oh, it's a hybrid. I'll just yeah, stay home. That's our outing. He is a And it affects everything. Is it on here? Motion to adjourn. Yes. 6 p.m. Do a second. Jim. All those in favor. 6 p.m. We'll make a motion to adjourn the select board. Second. We only got All six in favor? Okay. Tim LG, aye. Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for online. Thanks, Brand, for hanging out with us.